I, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was just the second woman ever to say these impressive words. After this, she ended up on the Supreme Court for 13 years and was a judge for 27 years up until her untimely death. She was one of the few to be nominated by not, by not one, but two presidents, these being Jimmy Carter in 1980 and Bill Clinton in 1993. In my lifetime, I expect to see three, four, perhaps even more women on the high court bench. After this, she did achieve her goal, getting two women on the high court bench. But who actually was the notorious RBG, and what did she do? RBG worked very hard in high school, but her mother had cancer the entire way. On the penultimate day of graduation high from high school, her mother, who was her biggest inspiration, passed away. She then traveled to Harvard, where she met her future husband, Martin, who just returned from the military. She was at a male-dominant school, where she was one, only one of the nine women and one of the other 491 men. Ruth was the first to graduate from the women and became the first member of the prestigious Harvard Law Review. Another challenge soon arose as her hu beloved husband Martin was diagnosed with testicular cancer in 1956 which required medication and rehab which he struggled with his entire life. Fortunately, he landed a job at a New York law firm. Ruth traveled to Columbia Law School where she was elected to the school's law review and then graduated from Columbia, first in her class. Despite her impressive grades and outstanding academic performance, she was still facing gender discrimination. She started teaching and was stellar at it. In 1993, there was an opening in the Supreme Court and RBG wanted the position. President Clinton knew that she was reliable and gave her the opportunity. It was one of the smartest decisions in Supreme Court history. But who actually was Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Miss Evans, a history teacher at Palo Alto High School, has more. She was known for her unbelievable um, push for gender equality and women's rights. Um, and she did a, an enormous amount for that throughout her entire career, not just when she was on the Supreme Court. Obviously, you could use notorious as a word to sum up RBG. But Miss Evans also thought of a good one. Unwavering. She was really unwavering in her focus on gender equality. Um, she, she got onto that very early in her career and just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and really, um, I think the United States has a huge amount to thank her for in terms of how, uh, how far we have moved towards gender equality. What was really interesting is she took on just as many cases about, about men being, um, discriminated against as she did women. So. You know, for gender equality rights, she was just this incredible champion. Um, she started early in her career, I think in the early 1970s, she started working with the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union. The ACLU works in the courts, legislators, and communities to defend and preserve the individual rights and liberties guaranteed to all people in this country by the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. I mean, she broke a lot of barriers throughout her life, right? She. Um, she was somebody who, got, who graduated top of her class from Columbia Law School. She even has a prize at Columbia for being that outstanding in academic achievement. We um, would not have gotten as far in terms of looking at our, looking at the laws that we had written and our, um, you know, and how, how inherently gender was written into our laws. That notion that we should each be free to develop our own talents, whatever they may be, and not be held back by artificial barriers, man-made barriers, certainly not heaven-sent. Foreign Focus, I'm Matthew Ehrlich.